Hello, welcome back to the Spire of the Soul Seers. I'm not sure what these guys are up to in here, and actually I can't talk to any of them. Oh, they're a bunch of Animancers. Alright, let's check out what they have in the cupboards. Still checking out the stairs. About to go to the Queen. Well, maybe not. Maybe not in this episode, but like, we're, we're getting there. And we have a lot to talk to. She's probably gonna get murdered. Unless she has a lot of guards, which is very likely. Because that's how usually it goes. So... Oh, I see. Burned. Well, that won't do at all. Spire of the Soul Seer's rooftop. Oh, this building is really tall. Get them? Oh, I like this picture. A steady white-haired elf uh, frowns down at the table covered in coiled copper wires and glimmering uh, shards of Adra. Her gloved hands uh, smooth her well-tailored valian coat as she mumbles under her breath. Apparently absorbed in her work, the Animancer doesn't acknowledge your presence. Oi! The woman spins on you. Blinking rapidly behind a pair of uh, brass-brimmed spectacles, her bright uh, carmine eyes and paper-white skin mark her as uh, one of the Glam Fallon. Hello, my apologies, I didn't see you there. Her Adarian uh, bears a clear, crisp, but difficult to place accent. The Pale Elf examines you verily, unease clear in the set of her shoulders. I'm a play pale elf too! I'm actually paler than you. They made fun of me all the time. That's partially the reason I'm going uh, with the name Watcher. Are you alright? What do you do here? That's the high five? You don't get much sun, do you? Oh boy, the pale elf jokes. At first, her narrowing eyes are the only indication that she heard you. Then, with a quiet sno uh, snort, the edge of her lip curls into a smirk. Ah, you meant because of my skin tone. Yes! I could make the same observation of you, were I less courteous. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking right! You're done. Uh, well, you're on the right foot already. <clears throat> her smirk expands into a wry grin. <laughs> Oh. Are you alright? I am fine. Is there some reason I shouldn't be? One of her pale eyebrows arches. Uh, she tugs at her gloves and looks away from you. Calm settles about her like a burial shroud. Which is not to say I do not appreciate your concern. I do. Well, I'm glad that you're appreciating my concern. She settles her spectacles on her nose. As she does so, you notice her hands shaking. I, like the other scholars here, am engaged in the study of the soul sciences. Was there something you needed, or may I return to my studies? Ye no, you're not allowed. We're still talking. Her thin lips settle into a crooked smile. As she speaks, a drop of blood rolls out of uh, the elf's nose and drips onto her lips. She pulls a handkerchief from her coat pocket and wipes away the blood without a word. Whoa, 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 what is that about? You burned yourself? That's the that's the really stupid thing to say. You're bleeding. That That's that's like the captain obvious thing to say, but you burned yourself? That's a really stupid thing to say. You're bleeding. Indeed. I apologize if you find the sight of blood unsettling. Though, from your appearance, I would expect you to be well acquainted with it. Hmm... In any case, why are you here? Attack, I don't know what you are, but I know you're dangerous. What the hell? That's insane. <laughs> oh, is she kind of shapeshifter? Shapeshifter? Your, your accent isn't Valian. Why are you dressed like one? Just a bit of culture I've picked up along the way. Your clothing is spotless and well tailored in the old Valian style, replete with uh, lace, silk velvet, and, and brocade. I admire their tailoring tradition immensely. 
It's much grander than clothing one finds in the white that wins. As she straightens the cuff of her jerkin, a small look of satisfaction flits across her face. It's marvelous. Who's your tailor? I am, of course. She puts her hand on her hips and straightens her back. <laughs> You're an Edmonster and a seamstress? <laughs> Why do we have the attack option again? <laughs> a curious mind is an agile mind. Besides, the two practices are more alike than one might think. I suppose they do both require careful hands and an obsessive attention to detail. Care and patience, yes. It is gratifying to be understood. She brushes a speck of dust from uh, the front of her coat and gives you a lopsided smile. Why do I want to kill the only pale elf I, I came across? Oh, there's no way. There's no way there are pale elves uh, in the world other than me. She must be a pretender. How come you be in that kataka? It is a mundane story. I sought out the ship with the longest overseas route departing from the Republic's and booked passage. Though her words are flat and her voice effectless, Yidvin is not calm. She shifts her weight from foot to foot and looks anywhere but at your face. She has the r she has the restless, nervous air of a horse about to bolt. I had intended to perform a handful of experiments regarding the nature of souls that could only be done safely at sea. I know of no animacy that must be done strictly at sea. A fellow researcher. Then, perhaps you will understand. She stepples her fingers and gives you a sly smile. I'm not going to like where this is going, am I? Understand what? I've long been fascinated by the nature of entropy. Nothing is unaffected by the passage of time, excepting souls. Supposedly. She smirks. Is it not possible that... Repeated reincarnation damages a soul. Could the process of reincarnation itself be responsible for some of the many ills that plague the souls of Kith? I don't know. I deduced that it was possible to escape the cycle. Escape Bareth's grasp. To remove one's soul from the wheel. And you decided to attempt the procedure on yourself? I'd not experiment upon myself without relative certainty, it would be a success. A uh, thick tweaks her cheek. There were complications. My soul may be uncoupled from the wheel, but it seems to have become dislodged from my flesh as well. Uh oh. Her voice lowers as she speaks. Still, I am free. So you're dead. How do you intend to manage the decay of your flesh and escalating desire for soul essence? I have the opposite problem, I say. My desire for flesh increases as my soul decays. Well, thanks for that um, comment, Takehu. I am concerned by neither. I will sate my appetite with the souls of animals, just as I sated my appetite with their flesh while while in my previous life. In the absence of live animals, Luminous Audra has proven sufficient to sustain me. A slight grimace crosses her features like a shadow. If I catch you nibbling on my lantern, I'll kill you dead. For real dead. Seraphin's eyes close as he nods along. I worry you've confused me for a moth. Is she insane? She's very interesting so far. And if that doesn't work... I will address that problem when it is before me, should it arise at all. I do not care to borrow trouble. What what possess you to, to do this to yourself? My body and soul are my own. Why should I not do with them as I wish? She squares her shoulders and fixes you with a glare. Okay. I give you that one. Who are you to say? Uh, Yudvin, uh, Kermin eyes cling to you, mouth set in a small frown. I'm a watcher, I see into the souls of others and, if necessary, pass judgment on what I find there. 
I'm... No, no, it's just... No. I'm something of an expert on the subject of souls. How so? Yeah, let's just go with the Watcher line. Truly. Her brows uh, rise high on her forehead. She leans toward you, her eyes fixed on yours, suddenly intent. Tell me, what do you see when you peer into the souls of Kith? Do you see their misdeeds? Their evil thoughts? Their unkindnesses, perversions, cruelties? That's fairly specific. She blinks, frowns, and breaks eye contact. I apologize. I... I have always felt a kinship with your kind. Having witnessed the very worst in Kith has left me keenly attuned to recognizing ill intent. That, that's all the races. I, I, I just had to double check. Dominant civilized race of Eora, including humans, Almana, dwarves, elves, orlans, and godlike. That's all the races you can start with. It doesn't uh, exclude anything. She quickly shakes her head. Perhaps you would be amenable to me traveling with you on something of a permanent basis? I would love that. You can do that for me? What can you do for me? Why do you want to travel with me? I have a vested interest in Luminous Audra, but acquiring it here can be expensive. You have a ship of your own and are clearly well-traveled. I suspect I would encounter more Luminous Audra with you than I would on the streets of Nekataka. That's pretty much correct. I'll kill you if you give me cause to mistrust you, just so we're clear. Welcome aboard! Truly? She blinks, her mouth hanging half open. Whoa, you sure about that? That's very interesting! She's smart! Yeah, 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 I'm sure. Thaklaut, traveler. I am grateful. Thaklaut? An... Oh, that's the explanation? An Ord Yoma expression of gratitude? She clasps uh, your hand in hers. Uh, pumps it quickly and releases. After a quick pat down of uh, the various pockets suited into her coat, Yudvin nods sharply and rests a hand on the hilt of her rapier. I have all that I need. We may depart at your leisure. Her lips curl into a coy little smile and she says no more. She's a cypher rogue? Damn. I was concerned that she might be just a, just a person that just goes on the ship. Cypher Rogue. Well, we already got a full Cypher. We don't have a... Wait, do I have a Rogue? Oh yeah, a lot is a, is a part Rogue. Let's just do a Cypher Rogue. Yeah, that's, that's good. Sounds good to me. Wow, she is interesting. Takehu, you get fired instantly. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just how it goes. Uh, what can you do? Should I level her up right away? Okay, let, let's just check her out. Uh, what her uh, weapon skills are. Can you use any... Uh, what's the most valuable one? Light armor, exceptional. Fine, I guess we can use that. What is this cloth? Valium frock cloth. It's nine. This is nine as well. Okay. You're gonna use that armor for now. Also, dagger, rapier. So she might wanna use uh, one handed weaponry. Seraphin, cipher. Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling good about this. If I need to respect her, I might just do that. Now, the, the main thing is here. What kind of uh, skills should he bring to the table? Alchemy we got, Arcana uh, brought by Watcher, 
Latics we got. Explosives. I don't know if you know if you need explosives. But I don't care for explosives that much. Mechanics we got. Uh, she can be a thief. Frankly. That just gonna work fine. Okay, what else she's gonna bring to the table? Uh, diplomacy, history, insight, intimidation. I can't help but feel that the main character should be the one mostly having like uh, two points into a lot of things. So she can use like two points plus half of the half of what the uh, other character has. Because many times the passive skill check is a skill check of the main character. Arcana. Yeah, the Arcana definitely helped. Religion. I don't know what to go for here. We can go for a little bit of intimidation. A little bit of diplomacy. Hmm. Streetwise. Appropriate etiquette. I don't know. Let's go for a streetwise. Escape guile. Cypher rogue. We can go for both. <sighs> oh, it's gonna be tough, um. When critically hit, immune to engagement for 20 seconds or oh, 2 seconds. Backstab. A lot more damage with weapons against. Close by targets. Crippling strike. Successfully hobble. Blinding strike. Do I want to hobble people? I don't know. Maybe you gotta try backstab. I only have one point. I kind of like Whisper of Treason. That's a pretty good one. Penetrating vision. Penetration with cypher spells. Mm -hmm. Lingering echoes is good too. I think Charm might be the best one. Okay, let's do this. I'm just gonna pump her stealth up. Okay, we can go with Backstab. Oh, I need to pick one for only one class. Defensive roll. We can go with Backstab. My help, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go for even more backstab. Yeah, I'll just go for stealth. Wait, insight. I'll go for intimidate. Survival check. I don't know. Mostly covered by the party. Go for diplomacy. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay. Both classes. We pick for both classes here. What is this? Full attack, crippling strike. But it's only hobble. Bonus penetration of two. And hobble is not particularly interesting. Even though it costs us one guile. Blinding them actually opens them up for uh, sneak attacks. Blinding target. Two weapon style. One handed style. Okay, we gotta go next. 
I don't know if I care about anything here. Game more focus. Damage with weapons. Maybe we, that's what we're gonna go with. Not generating a lot of... Half sword. He's gonna be a one hand fighter. Can go with that. One class is choosing something. Hits converted to crits. One handed style. One handed style. Let's go with one handed style. More stealth, maybe a little bit more uh, diplomacy. Hits converted to crits. So she's gonna be really good with critting. And that's all we have for now. Hmm. Yeah, this is already pretty good. Gouging strike. That that's just a better uh, blinding strike. Uh, enemies causing raw damage over time until the comment ends. So fully, it's just gonna stay on till the combat ends, which is crazy. Penalty for the uh, deflection. Vile blinded. Uh, what would be a good question is, uh, how intelligent is she? Because she's very intelligent, so that makes any uh, disable last longer. Okay, let's go back. I'm gonna go for stealth. Uh, let's just go for streetwise. Finishing blow. One handed gains, nine raw damage per three seconds for nine seconds. It's pretty good. Two handed gains, staggered. What is staggered? That's terrible. Range gains penetration. This looks pretty good. Strike the bell. Raw damage per 3 seconds for 9 seconds. That's really good. Strike the bell looks crazy. Uh, gouging strike. Wait a second, what is this? Is, is this an attack? Huh. One handed looks, looks the best. Minus five might and cannot engage enemies. It's terrible. And I believe there are some ways to improve this as well. Two-handed staggers affect upgraded to dazed. That's still pretty bad. One-handed damage over time effect now lasts twice as long. That's pretty garbage. Range of effects also gain bonus damage. That's pretty good. So, if you wanna go with that, uh, that's actually very good. I don't know, do we wanna go for... Staff stacking penalty to deflection. Maybe. Yeah, that's... That, I don't know, maybe it's gonna be a stacking penalty to deflection. I like Strike the Bell quite a bit. Uh, the rogue looks for openings to counter attacking combat. Incoming melee attacks that target deflection and miss have a chance of allowing an instant full attack. Repost requires melee weapon. Uh, I don't care about that. No worry about that. This looks pretty good. So it's bonus penetration, full attack that causes. 27 raw damage. 
That's really good. This is... This allows uh, flank attacks and stacking uh, penalty deflection basically means uh, the target is gonna get killed pretty damn soon. Raw damage until the combat ends. That's just against the, the most insane enemies. Against most enemies, Confounding Blight is gonna be the right choice. Anyway, what kind of guile cost this has? Two, two. They both cost two guile. I don't know. Both looks good to me. Uh, the upgrade of the strike the bell is it's not as good. Anyway, let's go with confounding blind. Uh, confounding uh, blind. Puppet Master. I don't even know if I want the Puppet Master, actually. Because uh, this charms them for 20 seconds, this dominates them for tw uh, 20 seconds, and I don't care too much about that. Psychic Break. Okay, I need to pick for both. Plus one penetration with weapons. That should be good. So we're gonna go with more stealth, maybe streetwise. I only pick for one of them. Full attack requires, yeah, anything that misses causes a. Uh, Instant full attack with repost. Which is not bad. Especially for a character that uh, tries to go for that. Maybe not so much, but like, it's, it's gonna help. Strike the bell looks good. Again. Cypher skills. Don't care that much. Also, the mind wave is kind of crappy. Weapon and shield style, two weapon style. I'm actually somewhat tempted. Oh, lingering echoes. Makes any affliction last 10% uh, longer. Which is... Wait. Affliction? It's negative effects. So, charm lasts a little longer. That's not terrible. But, I think counter-attacking with... Uh, Full power seems like the best choice. I don't know what to go for here. Uh, let's go for Saber. What do you have? Rapier? Uh, I think that's it. Hmm. As you wish. Oh, she needs a good weapon. One handed weapon. Mine rapier. Ah, that doesn't sound as fine. Fine pistol. I think a Seraphan has a uh, both uh, exceptional greatsword. Wait a second. Why is the fine rapier more accurate? Oh, because it's it's accurate. Twelves. Okay, that's definitely better. Uh, but Seraphon does have a uh, two-handed style as well, picked up. And also, we can look at the AI of uh, uh, Cipher Cautious Clone, Rogue Aggressive. What what does that even do? Game. Uh, okay. So those are preferred. Finishing bow, gambit, strike the bell, ring the bell, what is that? Yeah. At least two guile. So I think rogue aggressive is, uh, what's good. Rogue cautious, what do you do? 
Uh, yeah, that's not too interesting. Anyway, aggressive priority. Um, highest power level. Let's go with that. Damn. This new character looks interesting. Also, she has a lot of health, doesn't she? Not really. Seraphin is weak. Okay, why do you have more health than Seraphin? I don't know. It's pretty unlikely that uh, anything's gonna miss against her. Anyway. Uh, Flown Alette. From her unkept hair to her agitated pacing, Flown Alette gives of an air of restrained chaos. She waves you over with a few quick motions. You don't mind if I talk and work, do you? What can I do for you? Oh, uh, you work here? Not the coziest place for it, is it? But the open air, the lightning specifically, is a boon. Let's our mages have a rest now and then. Sounds great. Good test of the equipment too. We're working on making it less delicate. Our junior researchers are still a little soft. What are you working on here? Glad you ask, Amika. Very glad. We are very excited about the work here, and we are always looking for volunteers. Ah. Oh. We've catalogued a number of interesting properties unique to Luminous Adra, but there are some very specific qualities we are investigating. Qualities that a watcher happens to be uniquely suited to exploring. You're just what we're missing. Well, I'd be happy to help however I can. What is that? I'm not a scientist. Gelardi, what a relief. You won't regret this. Let me run you through the theory, and we'll get to the test itself. Luminous Adra has special effects upon Keith. Even to the humblest, it offers some small improvements. Rejuvenation, vitality, the kind of thing you sell to people back home, ne? No. But what about those who have already harnessed their own essence? Consider the talented cut purse, for instance, who can cross a room by slipping briefly into another place. The world between. Luminous Adra holds enormous quantities of essence, the kind of energy we can't replicate or restore. And these formations have a kind of connection to each other across the in-between. I believe we can harness this connection and your natural abilities to transport a person across great distances in a moment. What? You're reading too many books. Your theory is sound. I've used uh, the Adra to track someone before. What? Oh, good. <laughs> You've done some experimenting on your own. A curious mind is a happy mind, I say can't mope about ghosts all day. We've collected a number of illuminating readings, and our machines are ready to harness the Adra's essence. Mm. But for the moment, we are effectively blind when it comes to targeting the next pillar. Now, if someone were capable of sensing that essence in the in-between, even of manipulating it, someone like a Watcher, for instance. You want to use my connection to the Adra? Uh, I could target a specific pillar. Precisely right. We've had luck with shorter jumps, but those were as much spellcraft as science. The idea is for you to focus on the next connection point. The machine will use that new link between the Adra veins to create a tether, as well as provide the energy for you to jump effectively. What's really exciting is... So long as you are holding that connection open, your companions can jump alongside you. Okay, I know what you're on, uh, on about, lady. So, this is a point where we can teleport to other places. This is kind of a way point, I guess. And there's no risk I'll show up missing limbs or nothing? Hey, you gotta take that chance. The next spill is due east of here, in the middle of a farm. It's not as tall as this one. But you shouldn't have any trouble finding it. Oh, and don't worry. We paid the farmers. And what if something goes wrong? There was that fellow that jumped a little too far over the edge. Stop scaring our assistant. I have to take care of something first. We'll get everything ready for you. Alright. 
We're gonna come back. But I wanna check out this sector before we leave. It seems like we need to go down. We still got a temple to check out. And damn it, I still wanted to check out the... Okay, I wanna check out a lot of things. But we got a very interesting companion. Damn. I actually uh, considered making a, a cypher rogue myself uh, when I was considering what kind of character to make. That would have been quite silly. Making a cypher rogue <laughs> pale elf just to find another cypher rogue pale elf. So like, hey, what's up? Oh, okay. Temple of Barat. And... Uh, you go in first! So you defeated this ship-devouring beast all by yourself? I'm telling you, you just have to aim for What's the What's downstairs? Eyes. Maybe not now. Maybe it's time to take a break, so... Thanks for watching, guys, and see you next time.